friends uh, welcome uh, to another video on my channel i am professor khalid khan today we are going to talk about sample size calculation for clinical trials i am based at the university of granada and today i have the privilege of the company of my friend colleague and co-author dr milan joshi he has recently published a book on sample size estimation so we are in good hands today to receive expert advice on this complex topic of uh, sample size estimation the first question that arises is why do we need studies that require sample size calculation can we not just make inferences about effects of treatments based on our own clinical experience on this uh, some time ago i wrote a commentary co-authored with other colleagues where we stated that medicine is an stochastic act this means that the relation between our treatment and the outcome of the patient is not always certain sometimes we treat patients well in an evidence based manner yet they might have a poor outcome on the other hand we might treat patients poorly or carelessly yet they may survive and have a good outcome so because of this uncertainty between means and ends it's not possible to infer causal associations and for this we highlight that patient centered research or clinical epidemiology uh which requires uh, studies of uh, substantial size is what helps to reach uh, a causal inference in another related uh, piece published with uh, my former editor colleague Joshua Fenton we stated the same idea referring this time to the weakness of uh, uncontrolled case series not just case reports in that case series themselves are inexact uh, in terms of uh, scientific inference and we highlight that large number of patients ought to be systematically recruited and followed up in order to make causal inferences so in summary medicine is stochastic not exact clinical trials attempt to control for uncertainty and the play of chances controlled by the fact that sufficiently large sample size uh, ought to be employed uh, in clinical trials so moving on from here we see a published clinical trial where the method section refers to the primary outcome and then it refers to to the need to detect an absolute increase in the primary outcome rate when groups are compared and then for this desired level of increase a level of statistical significance and power and uses the term type 1 error so we hope to get an explanation concerning these concepts from dr milan today to begin with how big should the sample size be that's our question to answer the question we got to begin by understanding uh, what is the flow diagram of a clinical trial from a population we select a sample and this sample is then randomized and milan could you help us walk through the flow diagram of a clinical trial sure um the reason that we allocate uh, interventions at random is that we want the groups to be comparable in everything except the intervention this enables us to prove causation so we allocate treatments to a control group and to an experimental group and we follow them up we then measure the outcome in, in each group and we hope that um the difference that we pick up which is the effect measure will in fact be a clinically important difference that we hope to prove 
Okay, thank you, Milan, for that. So the clinically important effect that Milan just referred to will use a binary outcome as an example for our discussion. Uh, what do we mean by this? Well, first, we need to figure out what is the expected proportion of the outcome in the control group. So here, we have two ideas uh, put together. One relates to the expected proportion, and we can obtain this information through published studies, through a clinical audit of care provided to patients in our own setting, or we may conduct our own preliminary studies if such data do not exist. Or we may rely on our clinical experience and may subjectively be able to offer a range of estimates of expected proportion of the outcome. What is the important outcome is a critical question. The outcome chosen for a trial should have importance with respect to the expectations of the patients. And if such an outcome is not clearly known, then we may turn to the literature to look for publications that describe core outcome sets. So from this basic knowledge, we can then move to the next step, which is what is the hoped for proportion of the outcome under the experimental group? And the difference between the expected proportion in the control group and the hoped for proportion in the treatment group, we come to make a, an estimation of the clinically important effect that we wish to discover through our clinical trial. Guidance concerning how this should be done is provided in detail in this publication that you see at the bottom uh, of uh, the screen in the middle. We'll now move on to ask uh, Dr. Joshi, my friend Milan, to give us an explanation about the terms such as type 1 error, type 2 error, and power. So I request you, uh, Milan, to, to take over from me here. Sure. There are two mistakes which we wish to avoid when we analyze the results of a clinical trial. We, we wish to avoid a spurious result. In other words, getting an apparently significant result when we haven't got one. Um, if we think that we have found something and we have not, that's called a type one error. Um, so that's a spurious result. And we want the chance of this to be as small as possible, typically 5% or less. On the other hand, the other, other error we wish to avoid is we don't want to miss anything. If there really is a clinically important difference between the two groups, then we wish to have a very high chance 80% or more of picking it up. And failure to do so is called a type two error. So power, that is the, the chance of picking up a difference if it's there, that's clinically important. That's something we wish to maximize. Okay, so what is the relation, uh, Milan, between type two error and power? Well, power is actually the complement of a type two error. A type two error means that you miss something. And the complement of that, of course, is that you find it. So if there's a clinically important difference between two groups, you don't want to miss it, that would be a type two error, but you wish to find it, and that's power, and you want that to be as high as possible. Okay, well, thank you very much for uh, that, uh, that, that clear uh, <coughs> explanation. Would like uh, Milan to give us an example using a binary outcome of uh, how sample sizes might be calculated. Sure. Now, usually, um, sample sizes are a bit like magnifying glasses. The bigger the difference between the groups that you, that you hope to pick up, uh, the smaller the sample you will need. So, for example, if the expected proportions in the arms were 70 and 90 percent, um, you might only need 64 per group in order to have a high power picking it up. Uh, and this, in fact, can be obtained via, via formula. On the other hand, you might want to pick up a, a, a smaller difference, for example, between 50 and 40 percent. That's more difficult. You need more people for that, uh, 380 per group and 
to, to arrive at that, you might need to use a table um, in order to uh, arrive at that sample size. If there is a formula, how might one apply it? Could, we one, could one just use uh, an online calculator or are there uh, other options available? Um, it is possible to use online calculators if people know what they're doing. Um, but if not, then fortunately I've written a book which provides people with a formula that they can use for calculating them. Um, and I've also provided tables which they can use in the case of proportions. Okay, thank you. And uh, I, I remember you explaining to me that the formulas are not that tedious and a handheld calculator can be deployed to, to be able to make that calculation. Indeed, and I've got one example right here. It's a very simple and basic calculator and you can in fact use the formulae um, or in my book or in other sources, but something no more sophisticated than that, which does only basic arithmetic. Okay, well, thank you. Could you, before we leave, also give us uh, a flavor of how might we proceed with sample size calculation when the outcome measure is continuous? Certainly. Now, with continuous measures, we need to know what the clinically important difference is as before, but we also need to know the variability of the measurements, which is the standard deviation. Now, if the two are equal, then it so happens that the sample size we need is about 16 per group. If, if the um, ratio between the two is not um, the same as one, then you need a formula, which I have provided in my book, very simply, and you can do the calculation. Okay, so we've been talking uh, quite a lot about your book, Milan. Uh, could you, before we leave, give an overview of what one might gain from your book if they get their hands on it? Sure. My book is written for um, clinical people. It's not written for mathematicians. So people don't need to have studied maths beyond a school level in order to understand it. And a simple calculator will be sufficient. I use the method of programmed instruction so that people have to um, make sure that they understand a, a piece of work with a simple question before they read on. And so they can have confidence that they grasp material. Um, I begin with an introduction to statistical ideas for people who might not have, may have forgotten them or not be familiar with them. I then discuss preliminary studies, which are the studies um, you conduct before you go on to full-length trials, uh, which might give you, for example, uh, the information you were talking about earlier, such as the proportions you might expect um, in the different arms. Um, I then go on to uh, trials involving proportions, among other things. And of course, I also deal with continuous measures. Okay, Milan, well, thank you very much for being uh, with us here today. And uh, in bringing this video session to close, I invite colleagues listening and watching to ask us any questions, directing them to myself or to Milan. And based on what you wish to know in more detail, we will then return uh, with uh, more videos in the future addressing your queries in detail. Thank you.